great to have Kanan Chapman as our speaker tonight. And many of us got to know Kanan when he was started off, and I guess, in the junior high area uh, right. when our kids were in there and then moved up to the high school area and was a great leader for our kids and great heart for student ministry and and uh, served many years at Preston Wood and then uh, was called to go to uh, Emmanuel Baptist Church in Little Rock. And how many years have you been up there now, Kanan? Officially one year. Halloween was when I moved. Wow. Wow. All right. That's that's crazy. And uh feels like a few years at this point. He and his wife have two two kiddos, what, four and a, what a year and year and a half or so? Yep, that's right. So uh so they're uh I'm sure uh into all kinds of things now. Oh gosh, yes. So uh but we're uh looking forward to kind of hearing your word and uh Hey, Tim Hatfield. Thank you. Uh -huh. Oh, yes, sir. You want to open us in a word of prayer, and then we'll hand it sure. over to Kenan. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this night. We just thank you for the opportunity to hear from you, God, through Canaan. And we just thank you for Canaan and all the, the impact he had on some of our kids. And we just thank you for his leadership. We thank you for calling him to a place where uh, he can continue to pour into people's lives. And we just thank you for him being on tonight and just speak through him and give him encouragement as he speaks to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you guys for having me and for, um, I mean, it's truly humbling. What we're going to be talking about tonight yeah. is something uh, I think that's really close to my heart. Uh, thank you, Dan and David, for inviting me. Uh, I asked Dan, I said, Dan, what do I need to talk about? And he said, you can talk about anything. Can you guys read that or is it backwards? It's good. Okay, good. He said, you can, I'm a, I have some visual aids tonight. Um, I think it makes the Zoom more fun, right? Um, he said, talk about anything. And I said, well, what does that mean? And he said, well, whatever God's teaching you. And I said, well, what does that mean? He said, well, whatever's on your heart. Um, I mean, just what's going on during this time? And I said, okay, um, that, that's it's quite a, it, it's a lot. Okay, so how do I boil it down? Um, what I'm going to be talking about tonight is actually something that is hits really close to home. And um, I was scrolling through, I've seen some of the names, listening to some of the introductions. I know a lot of you um, and not all of you though. And so some of you are gonna get a little bit of an inside scoop. And for those of you who I do know, um, I just want to say that this comes from a really personal place and I'm gonna be really vulnerable. Um, it's something that's pretty personal. I, I made a mistake in the past few weeks and I've been dealing with it. Um, and so that's what we're gonna be talking about tonight is what we do when we let each other down. Um, and that's really the bottom line. Um, if you have your Bibles, open them up to Matthew uh, chapter five. We're gonna be in the Sermon on the Mount today. Um, and that's what I wanna talk about. Um, as we talk about disagreements and disappointments and letting each other down, um, I would hope that I'm not alone in the fact that um, maybe sometimes we miss the mark. Um, this time has been super challenging and it's been liberating at the same time, this entire circumstance. Um, but I rest in the fact that I know I'm not alone uh, when I make mistakes. Um, but we never, like we would like to think that we never make mistakes, but it's even the little things that get us. And I was thinking about some of those things who make me mad uh, or disappoint me or let me down. Um, even the things that I don't think actually should, like when you uh, press the remote and nothing happens. Um, you're pointing it like right at the TV or you think that it, it should be whatever, or the remotes now, like my mighty remote, you have to charge the remote control. There's no batteries. You have to charge it, right? That's a little frustrating moment. Um, when you're running through the grocery store masked up right now or whatever, and there's somebody in the express line and they have 12 items and then there's 10 or less, right? When, um, when you go pick up a cookie at work and you take a big bite, but it's not chocolate chip, it's oatmeal raisin right? They look so similar, but they'll get you. And that is just get you. Uh, people who park funny, you know, they, they're outside the lines or they're parking where they shouldn't. Um, things like that, they just get under our skin. Um, but my mistake was not something tiny like that. My mistake was a joke I made in poor taste. Um, it was a, a joke that should have probably been made, you know, in just a room of guys, maybe around people that I knew even better. And um, I'm still dealing with the consequences of that joke. I literally went, oh, yikes. Um, I immediately, immediately backed up and said, hey, I don't know why I just made that joke. And I, I went and, and took care of it, right? Um, 
But this, what I'm gonna be talking about today, tonight's Devo really comes out of a place of what I've learned over um, this, this pursuit of forgiveness and making things right. And so um, when I preach tonight, I'm preaching to myself and I'm hoping that we can all take something away from it. So um, this is what we're talking about, the consequences of messing up and what happens when we have our oh yikes moment. Uh, do we get angry? Yes. Do we, get, do we disagree? Yes. Do we, do we disappoint people and do people disappoint us? Yes. Um, do I really have to deal with other people? Unfortunately, yes. Um, are we going to talk about how to fix errors in our life? Absolutely. Um, and that's the bottom line. That's what I'm going to be talking about tonight. Um, I know I'm not alone in admitting that I don't have my life 100% uh, together all the time, and disappointments are bound to happen. So that's why um, Jesus thought it was appropriate to talk about it in the Sermon on the Mount. Um, it's not going to be easy, uh, what we're talking about today, but the truth is that Jesus really tells us um, how to handle some of these issues where we either disappoint or face disappointments. Uh, if you have your Bibles, we're in Matthew chapter 5. We're going to start in verse 21. And I didn't put my bookmark where I should have been. So I've got to flip to it. Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. You have heard it said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. Whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar and remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift and go. First be reconciled and then come to offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard that you be put in prison. Truly, I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. Um, what does this mean? Uh, in this context, you have to show the world that you are different, and that means to give up. You have to give up something. And what is, I think, in the context of this, um, in order to really understand, let's go back to the beginning in verse 21. This is Jesus speaking, and he says, you have heard it said um, in those days of old, you shall not murder. Um, this is some crowd participation. Does anybody know where Jesus is saying, you have said of old? Where was it said that you shall not murder? Anybody? Deuteronomy, Ten Commandments. <laughs> There you go. Deuteronomy, Ten Commandments. We see um, over and over and over in um, the, the, the Hebrew law that you can't murder. Don't do it. Uh, you shouldn't be angry. Uh, and that's what Jesus is saying. Um, Jesus is highlighting is, hey, just because it's old doesn't mean that it's uh, true. Um, I want you to understand that it goes far beyond just the letter of the law, right? Like it's not, don't think this is old and outdated. Uh, this doesn't apply anymore just because I'm here. What he's saying is this is an old saying. You've heard it said, but let me further explain it to you. It doesn't mean it's outdated. Let me just tell you an, an understanding and a deeper context of that question. Um, at the end of the day, believers don't get to be petty. So when it says everyone who is angry will be liable to judgment, everyone who insults his brother will be liable to counsel, whoever says you fool, which to me seems like a very, a very light slight, right? Uh, you are liable to the hell of fire. And so what Jesus is saying is, man, if you're about to worship, if you're about to uh, talk to God and you realize that there is some conflict in your life, then you have to go handle it. And believers don't get to be petty. They don't get to say, well, it's their fault. They don't get to say, well, um, you know, they're the ones that did me wrong. They don't get to say, uh, well, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and offer my sacrifice now since I'm here and then I'll deal with that later. They don't get to say, well, I'm going to do this tomorrow or they make me feel bad or, you know, I don't want to. Like, Jesus says you don't get that right. If you believe in me, you you waive your right to be petty. Um, Jesus goes on further to say, if you have anger in your heart, it's not just anger, like Jesus cleansing the temple. If it's not this this pure kind of anger, well, then you're going to have a problem because that's, that's just like what Jesus is highlighting in murder, and we know how bad that is. Um, you're giving up the fact that you get to be petty. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to give up something in uh, this idea of disappointment. You've got to show that you're different. This exposes the scribe's heresy um, that sin is not a matter of external performance. Uh, sin is a matter of the heart. And it's crazy to think about, but 
um, really our job as believers is to make peace. Uh, there's a law of the universe called the law of entropy. The law of entropy, does anybody remember high school physics or are there any um, engineers or scientists in the room? Does anybody know what entropy is? Things tend to degrade over time. That's right, that's right. The further on in time that we go, the more chaos the universe is. And really a fundamental law of nature in the universe that God programmed, what he's saying is Jesus has come to show us an alternative way, not just a way uh, that is different, but in a way that is opposite. So where the world would say, you blow up. The world says, you go get yours. The world says, you do you. Jesus says, you have to give up yourself. You have to, um, instead of creating chaos, your job is to set the chaos and to bring it down to a, uh, to a manageable size and to get rid of it. Because if you're loving each other and taking care of each other like I'm commanding you to, there's really no issue. So while the world is spinning out of control, your job as a believer is to model peace. Not only that, uh, you have to give in. So you have to give up, but you also have to give in. We're going to read in uh, Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 through 45. So a little bit further down, uh, this is what Jesus says about retaliation. You have heard it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him too. Literally going the extra mile. <laughs> uh, give to the one who begs from you. Do not refuse to borrow from And then we're not going to read it, but Jesus goes on to then say, hey, you have to love your enemies. Uh, this is literally giving up ourselves and giving into an alternative way of thinking um, you have to give into the fact that you're different um, if you're gonna let jesus change you let him change you uh, mosaic law in fact this is crazy when jesus says you've heard it said an eye for an eye a tooth for a tooth and we just established right where have you heard it said before mosaic law actually allowed for an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth it did it taught that um, but over time Time, the religion actually took that um, this idea of Jesus saying uh, this is a limiting provision right if somebody does you wrong this is the maximum amount you can go to I'm just saying like you're not gonna I'm not gonna let you let this get out of control the Pharisees instead of taking it from limiting reality retaliation took it as an obligation and they corrupted what Jesus meant what God established in these rules right they moved it from protection to vindication and that was never the heart of God when Jesus talks about retaliation, he says, you go above and beyond. And that means believers should act differently. We should. Where the world would sue, and they say, you know what? Just take my coat, too. Take my shirt. If anyone would go, ask you to go one mile, go, to. Um, and so that's really what we have to think about is, are we giving up ourselves? Are we giving in to what God is uh, calling us to, what Jesus has asked us to? Are we going the extra mile? Are we doing what we need to do in order to make peace? Um, as a believer, you have to transform any attempt to manipulate and rule your emotions into a free act of love. That would blow the world's mind. So when we say believers have to act differently, believers lose the right to be petty. Um, people who are born of the flesh are going to react in a knee-jerk way. And it's up to each of us in controlling our spirit and saying, what am I going to, going to allow to come out? Am I going to um, let anger come out and let this unrighteousness come out and this unholiness and this sin? Or will I let Jesus show through me? Will I show them that, hey, instead of my wig, I'm going to show love in this instance? Um, there's a lot of people who are going to uh, react a certain way. And um, the past few months have shown us how crazy people can be the past week and a half uh and and even this last month leading up to the election i mean you've seen we've seen every side of people and what jesus is saying is it's not about the individual behaviors it's not about what people do to you um honestly when it comes to anger and disappointments with each other uh disagreements and loving your enemies and how to act when you retaliate um just understand that there is something more that we can do to look differently than the world. And I think at the end of the day, what Jesus, the place that Jesus is trying to move us to 
is a place where we can get over. So we get in, get up, and then get over ourselves. Um, innately, we have um, evil desires. Um, we, we are born of the flesh. And uh, what Romans chapter 12 teaches us is that for every man born of Adam is born into the same bloodline. And that bloodline carries sin. It's been corrupted by mistakes. And we have to be covered in Christ's blood and adopted into his family, right? Being robbed from the, the sinful bloodline and given something, a brand new birth, right? Uh, to, to be able to even understand and experience love and to show it. And so the point that Jesus is trying to get us to um, is expressed. I gave you kind of an overview, but let's flip to Romans chapter 12 uh, and let's read together. Would anybody be willing to read Romans 12 uh, verses 14 through 21, just those seven verses? Bless them that persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that rejoice, weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Set not your mind on high things, but con condescend to things that are lowly, but not wise in your own, be not wise in your own conceits. Render to no man evil for evil. Through what? Wait, how far did you want me to go? Uh, go through 21. Okay. Render to no man evil for evil. Take thought for things honorable in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as in your you lie, be at peace with all men. Avenge not yourselves, beloved, but give peace unto the wrath of God. For it is written... Vengeance belong to me. I will recompense, uh, the, saith the Lord. But if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, you, have, you shall heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome uh, of evil, but overcome evil with good. Thank you. Um, Jesus is trying to get us to this point of purity, trying to get us to the point of sanctification. Um, in my Bible, this is called the marks of a true Christian. And truly, when reading this, I realized just exactly how, um, how difficult it's going to be, right? How difficult is it going to be to give in and to give up and to get over myself? Um, Jesus, to boil it all down, is asking for believers to forfeit themselves, saying, hey, you should not count anything that you are doing out of the flesh, but instead replace that with the supernatural power that only Jesus gives. Um, we would normally think about blessing people who are angry against us, but he says, for people who persecute you, bless them. Uh, we also read that in Paul's letter to the Romans, um, to rejoice with those who weep and uh, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep, to live in harmony with one another, to associate with the lowly to don't be wise in your own eyes to don't repay evil with evil but instead let love cover all in fact what it says in verse 12 18 which is a verse that i so often be reminded of that i'm, I'm going to make it my life verse to if it depends on me live peaceably with all that's actually a pretty big task and so i have to ask myself uh, what do I need to do in response to this? How can I actually live this out? What does this mean for my interpersonal relationships and for people who not only disappoint me, but for people who I disappoint? Because at the end of the day, I'm going to try, I'm going to try, I'm going to try again. But when I fall short, not that I'm planning to, not that I'm trying to, but when I fall short or when somebody falls short against me, how am I going to respond? Well, I would hope that somebody would try to treat me differently. I would want mercy and grace when I don't deserve it. And at the same time, if that's what I desire, I would love for somebody to show that to me in return. Uh, we have to live ourselves um, contrary and differently than the rest of the world. And remember that the gospel flips our thinking. Where the world says react, where the world says um, do what you need to do, where the world says uh, you just make sure you're responsible for you. Uh, you've got your own flavor of life to live, that whatever is true for you, um, that's true for you, and somebody else's truth is theirs. 
but we hold in our hand absolute truth. We don't believe in um, subjective truth. We believe in an objective, you know, undeniable guidebook for our lives. And just because just because it's it's what's expected or it's where we've come from, Jesus is saying, I'm calling you beyond. I'm asking you to do something that is normally outside of your your normal typical response. The bottom line is evil can overcome good. Scripture says so in verse 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The truth of the matter is that if we try to do good, well, then guess what? It's going to outdo the evil in the world. If we believers, if the men on this call will decide, you know what, I am uh, in the middle of, you know, this issue, or I have this interpersonal conflict, or there's something in my life where I have fallen short, or um, I'm, I'm still harboring feelings towards somebody who has, um, man, maybe done wrong by me. The truth is that no matter what has been done in the world by believers or not, by a work of Satan or by the plan of the Lord, Romans 12, 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. It's so encouraging to me that evil can be defeated, that goodness can reign. And choosing not to sin in our anger and seek restoration is something that's not only you know, possible, but with Jesus influencing your life is actually probable. Um, we were made in the image of God. Uh, we were made in his image. Jesus himself walked among us. We have a perfect example to look at. And if we look at him and we trust him and we ask him to act on our behalf, the goodness of grace of God can come, can come through and overcome anything that you're dealing with. Um, this has taught me a lot of things because where I think, you know, Canaan, you needed to go and seek some kind of reconciliation for your offhanded comment, for your joke. And, you know, it's really not that funny and, you know, you shouldn't have made it. Well, you know what? That's on me to go and seek that reconciliation before I even continue anything. At the same time, if I harbor any resentment because I feel like I'm still dealing with it and though I shouldn't be, uh, the truth is that's not on me. The gospel says for me to make peace. And it's on each and every single one of us striving for this goal when we can see it uh, made, uh, made come through. We can see it made possible by all of us saying, this is how I'm going to live. This is how I'm going to act. If one person does it, that's good. If all of us do it, that's change. And we're going to see the world act differently. So if I were to wrap the devil up with any kind of steps, I would ask you to do maybe a couple of things. Here's some questions. Do you harbor, as I read this, any anger or resentment towards someone? Think about it. Is there anybody that you harbor anger or resentment? Uh, think about if someone has a beef with you. And then regardless of the situation, you ask yourself, how can I seek peace and how can I forgive? Those are the questions that I've been asking. And those are the questions that this entire COVID season, I have been seeking grace um, every day. Uh, nothing is normal. You all know that. Uh, our families are topsy turvy. We're working from home. Uh, some of us, we're some of us are back at work. We have um, mask orders and then no mask orders. We're trying to phase in, and we can't get a seat at a restaurant. And kids are homeschooling. And I mean, you name it. Everything has changed. Our entire society. And throw in there an election year. Um, all of us had needed need an extra dose of grace. And so. If you were to say, you know what, um, this has been a weird year, this has been a weird time, uh, there are some things that are I probably need to just handle and settle on. And there probably are disappointments that I'm with the love of Christ. Well, my challenge to you would be to think about that tonight. As you pillow your head, ask God to show you some relationships that you can make better by showing love instead of any other reaction. How can we, as a group of men, um, overcome evil in the world through our actions and through our love? Can we truly flip the world on its head and give up our right to be petty as believers and give in to the plan that God has and then get over ourselves to say, you know what, in the end, it's not even about me or uh, me feeling good or, um, you know, the, the reputation I have or 
the 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 place I'm in or the weird season uh, I'm coming through. But the truth is, it's what God is asking us to do, and He is being glorified in the process. And so, um, I'm going to pray for you that if somebody comes to your mind in either one of these categories, uh, that you can think about that and think about how you can seek reconciliation and show them love maybe in the next time. And, um, and maybe together we can uh, show the world more love and overcome some of the evil that's out there. So if you will, let me pray for you. Um, I want to pray for all of you that are on here. Uh, Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for these men who will take a half an hour out of their Monday night and say, I want to talk about Jesus with other men. I want to hear an encouraging word. God, I know during this time, it has been so strange. Um, there is no amount of encouragement that I will uh, not gladly take. Uh, God, you have shown us sweet spots in the middle of the dark season. God, you have shown us immense grace in the middle of a very difficult and unprecedented time. And as things um, we hope uh, will get better, uh, we trust you with that. But knowing that even if things don't change from the immediate, God, you are good and you're teaching us things still. God, it doesn't matter what kind of season we're coming through or what kind of um, year 2020 has been for us. Uh, you're asking us to look different than the world. And that is our mission. Until the world all looks like your son, Jesus, God, we still have a mission. So I pray that we can overcome evil with our love. God, if that there's people that we have a problem with, we can handle that. God, if there's people that have a problem with us, we can seek rec reconciliation in the same way. God, as Jesus modeled these things, I pray that we can follow him. And as you have written about it in your word, I pray that we can be faithful to that. God, I pray that we can be peacemakers, as Jesus says in the Beatitudes in the beginning of Matthew. God, that we can be a peacemaker, like it says in Romans chapter 12, verse 18. God, that we can be the people who are e e um, invoking change in the world and that we're the ones that people look at and say there's something different about them. I wonder what it is. God, I pray that we can glorify you in everything that we do. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen.